Coffee, tequila, barbells. Coffee, tequila, barbells. That's all you need. You are like, this is like 60, this is just like 60 minutes. I think you're gonna learn how to apply some very simple, powerful concepts to your everyday training and uh, kickstart what you do in the gym and get about the business of being stronger than you ever thought you could be. You're gonna be so strong, your, your mom's gonna be like, what's happening to you? Who are you hanging out with? <laughs> your friends are bald with goatees. <laughs> If you want to be strong, you don't have to shave your head. It helps, but you don't have to. Being as strong as possible is as cool as thing I can imagine. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> to another edition of I like it. All right. <laughs> You're here for another episode of Barbell Shrugged. I'm Mike Bledsoe here with Doug Larson and Chris mm -hmm. Moore. Hello. And our guest, Justin Metz. Justin is one of the owners of Rotary Strength and Conditioning, home of CrossFit Eastern Shore. Correct. And that is a relatively new gym. Uh, yeah, kind, well, kind yeah. of and kind of not. So can you go into like how how it's new and how it's not? Yeah, it's it's been around for a while, but not as as we are now, I guess. Um, when I moved down to Alabama from obviously, well, I'm originally from here, and so I know you guys. And uh, when I moved down from Alabama, there was I was wanting to start my own thing, and there was a gym that. Um, that I got a hold of and uh, was talking to some people and just kind of training there just to kind of work out and train people when I first got there. And uh, then the owners or the people that were running it kind of split and it was pretty much one guy. And uh, the people that left kind of took like almost all the clients with them. Mm. Kind of, they kind of have like a little, Dicks, bit, little bit bitter. Yeah, well, <laughs> I actually don't know those people, so it's hard to talk about people you don't know. But um, I kind of came in right at the right time. I've and, got no problem with them. And, <laughs> and <laughs> Jason Odom, who is really the the guy that started it, um, um, the main owner, he uh, he was ready, I guess, to kind of give it up. And I was like, man, we can do this. You know, he's like, I can't do this with one person. And, like, we got like two bars and nothing. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, we just kind of started from scratch, and I think we had maybe, when it all happened, maybe like six members, like not even enough to pay rent. So, um, How long ago was that? That was actually about, about a year ago, and we went for about six months or so and couldn't really get over 20 people just because well, we didn't really have the facilities. You know, We were getting some equipment slowly with a little bit of money that um, – we went and got a loan for and stuff, but um, about the last six months or so, it's really picked up, and we've you know we're over forty members now. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't really know why. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, we we finally had the equipment in. Um, I guess it's kind of word of mouth. The couple people that we did have in there were kind of really close knit and just kind of grew that way. And it's still just the two of y'all coaching. Uh, with my wife Elise and uh, then Jason and I, yeah, mm -hmm. um, and I, I quit my full-time job here a couple months ago sweet so we've had yeah not for really good reasons but <laughs> it doesn't matter it doesn't matter man <laughs> there, there are positives in it i guess um and uh yeah it's just been kind of going from there so. so it seems like every one of these places has its own threshold you have to seek out and you have to just do absolutely whatever it takes to keep searching out the threshold where shit will start happening and popping and then the equipment kind of starts taking care of itself and the people start advertising enough for you to where more and more people come through the door. It's like if you just survive the vicious in the weeds first little phase of your efforts, then eventually it starts happening. I think I think a lot of gym owners they they have like a, a a regular full-time job and then, you know, they have the gym on the side and their their dream is usually I want to quit my full-time job mm -hmm. and I want to coach. Yeah, but making that making that jump to go Scary. from and a lot of times they have kids and they're married and stuff like that and that's really really <laughs> tough. And to make that transition, you're going to have to be poor for a while, I think. <laughs> like, uh, Doug and I used to live in the gym, like above the office. I like, couldn't <laughs> even stand up in our, yeah, there in were our bedroom. Yeah, because coming through the ceiling. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're just, I, we just hoped that we didn't have like a nightmare and like sat up too fast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, that one time I sat up and hit hit the bridge of my nose on one of the metal rafters. <laughs> oh, I thought <laughs> like you were I, being like metaphorical. You're being literal. You really no, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> no, we, this is no. absolutely literal. Yeah. We like slept in a cave with spiders. Like it, it was kind of what it was like. And the old the old gym was really awesome in a lot of ways, but really gnarly and very rugged and primitive. If code enforcement came in, we'd been shut down. It was too. It was a. It was an old building. Like an old 
60s era garage, right? Wooden structure garage with like a concrete <laughs> and beam structure bolted to the side of it. Right? I love y'all's old place, man. It was really hardcore was like, and, 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 and a not a bad part of town, but really nothing to to showcase. Yeah, pro- it, probably if you, hard at, to, uh, if you looked at the walls in the back, they were angled <laughs> back a little bit. <laughs> like, we're, li- we're waiting for that fucking building to fall down. <laughs> it's not a, it wasn't exactly a place you'd, you'd bring, like, I guess, mainstream, you know, like no. soccer mom clients. But pe- like, people who wanted just action loved it, though. I mean, no one who was a, a frequent client had any problems at all with that place. And we loved training there. Fuck, man, you got married there, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Justin, we have a lot of memories. There. Justin was the well DJ aware. for the wedding there. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. And that was it was. We had awesome times at that place. But yeah, you had to be really focused to to keep your eye on the prize that would come a couple years later. Yeah. Well, so you, you went. You had like a transition. You quit your job. It just wasn't paying what what it, it needed to pay. Yeah, it's kind and of so, a long story. Not really worth telling. But I, you know, I had a really well, everybody good job knows up that here. feeling, dude. <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of went from making a lot of money up here, and we wanted to get out of here to raise our family, and because uh, Memphis. No, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> talking about Memphis. Um, and I was like, it was a miracle. The first person I called, like the first place I called, I got a job at. I was like, oh, this is great. And it was like pretty much the same thing I was making down there. I was like, it was like a dream, and yeah, it wasn't. It was more like a nightmare. So it will. It really went downhill quick. And then a couple things happened, like with insurance and stuff like that. It's kind of the last straw. And we just realized I just need to quit. It's not worth it. So and so, did you quit that job kind of like, is that when the gym started picking up? Or The gym had already started picking up. Um, but I think it has, it's definitely, it's continued to pick up. Um, as, uh, and I think it's because we've been able to pick up some more classes and we've got more people there. It's, you know, it used to be, one person we had to delegate like all right i gotta work you got this going on you got this going on all right i'm gonna do this and we're just gonna have to like juggle fundamentals with regular class um but now it's you know i'm working like 15 hours a week so we got a little bit more freedom and jason um is uh he's going to school so he's not really working either kind of living off his army gi bill and the sounds familiar yeah that's how i did it (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Actually, it was taking like GI Bill money and putting it into the gym business. Yeah, yep. and it's only twelve hundred dollars a month. So, <laughs> so it's like living off a of GI Bill plus, yeah. plus taking the extra. But you can do that when you're living the there business. too, though. Yeah. Uh, so you don't really have like there wasn't like a big turning point where you're like, oh, we started doing this and we just started getting more clients, or or we did this and we retained more clients, and or we um, I mean, I think there's probably been a couple tipping points for us or whatever mm-hmm. um, and we really haven't met the big one yet but um i mean i think um why does everything of, always come back to malcolm gladwell he <laughs> infiltrates every conversation somehow six degrees of malcolm gladwell yeah um you know i i think um the last one is is when i quit my job you know we've really been able to focus a little bit more on the gym and and i've been able to do things that i want to do with promoting the gym like videos and you know things like you guys do um, social media stuff like that I couldn't do before um, and you know it's hard for you know just my wife or just Jason and, and my wife has only recently came on too so I think that's been a big thing too you know to go from one person training at a time to now you know up until a couple months ago she wasn't wor- really working so you know we've got three floating people to take care of people so awesome um, man but I, I think honestly I think just this whole sport of fitness kind of like blowing up recently has really helped you know us being on crossfit's page and um you know the games being on espn i mean i can't tell you how many people have come in like i saw that that rich fronin guy on on espn (laughs) seven and (laughs) that's what i want to do man (laughs) i can envision that guy in my head as you talk like him we we actually have no client like that (laughs) that talks like you you need one (laughs) i wish we did we've definitely had some people that come through the door and they're like and they saw the games like oh how'd you hear about crossfit like espn (laughs) Yes. Hey man, right my, my domains are way too narrow, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get me some of that. Much more broader fitness. <laughs> I gotta get me some broads. <laughs> <laughs> and your other job is you you have a part time job? Yeah, um right like actually like the very next day, um, I got a call 
from um, a place that somebody I had been talking to after I quit my job to um, to go work for a little like nutrition, sports nutrition place to sell like supplements and stuff like that. Oh, and um, so that's that's kind of been what I'm doing. He knew that I had a gym, and you know, it's it's a part time job, you know. But um, but everybody's really cool there. Um, everybody knows their stuff. It's not like working for a I don't know if I'm a big box supplement store or whatever. Interroll Nutrition Center. <laughs> yeah, Interroll. Well, it's, kind of, it's kind of like if you go to GNC, though. Like You talk to some of those guys, right. and you start asking about anything that's in the supplements. Like, this supplement's good for this. Well, what's this ingredient do? Uh, well, well, here's, well, here's everybody there find. is a college freshman meathead, bo- oh, yeah. aspiring bodybuilder of some kind. Yeah. It, it, well, I mean... The thing is that you guys may know this. They they get paid minimum wage and work on commission. So they get more commission based off of certain products. So like they make make five dollars off this protein, they might make twelve off this one. So you're gonna walk in there, it doesn't matter if it's crap or not. They're like, Oh yeah, this so and so, you know, muscle yeah. fortress is the <laughs> best weight gainer we've got, man. The guy weighs like a buck forty. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's I've really I been feel, able. I to... I feel really bad for all the years. Like, there's a stretch when I made my mom go with me to GNC. Like, mom, I had to have this supplement. I was pick a random one off, like the one that said muscle growth, incredible strength gains the most. Like, I gotta have that one. It's only like thirty bucks, mom. Come on. It's like a cell phone. <laughs> when I was like twelve years old, thirteen years old, training. <laughs> I, I remember I, doing I, the oh, same thing, dude. I, I was like 15 buying supplements, yeah. and it's like it tasted terrible. I was like, I should have just been eating more food. Yeah, I mean, but you're dumb, and no one's going to help you at that point. No one no. can provide any sort of meaningful insight. When I was 17, I was working at a Globo gym, and I just thought I, thought I knew everything just because I worked at a Globo gym. And <laughs> it was, yeah. You got like, like I told them tell you a story. I had a guy talk me into drinking plant fertilizer at my old gym. No, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! I was like, I used to work at. Uh, do you remember? Do you remember? Uh, How are you still alive? Do you remember Olympic <laughs> Fitness Center on I on do. Shelby Drive? We, that's where we used to train. That's where Penny Hardaway and everybody used to train too. Yeah, it was a great gym. But I, I worked there like when I was like thirteen because I could I could work there and like clean up after hours and train for free. Uh, but I was working the front counter like one Saturday morning, and we had to. This like aspiring bodybuilder guy who was like sort of the requisite, the the local meathead, and you had to have a guy like that in your gym. He trained people, and he was sort of big, sort of successful. What he was doing, but he would never want anything more than like a local tunica show. Because hey man, come here. You want to know the you want to know my real secret, bro? I'm like yeah. <laughs> You're huge. I want to be huge. He's like yeah, dude. I I take one uh, vial of this plant fertilizer every morning. I swear to God, bro. You just pop it in your mouth. I go, really? Yeah, yeah trust me, bro. So he, he pulls up this thing from the, under the counter and like takes a whole vial, and, like you know, a little squeezer, dropper. He goes, here, do it. So I, I go, yeah. I just immediately pop the whole thing in my mouth and like have this, this reaction like the kids you see We're on YouTube. We're supposed to take all of it. Like the kids on YouTube you see do the cinnamon challenge and immediately go, bleh. <laughs> when they do a spoonful <laughs> of cinnamon in their mouth. I basically did that, and all of a sudden the whole staff just rolls on the floor staring at you. Including the... The hot chick who was like 17 who worked the back counter, who all the 13 year old kids who were like trained there wanted to hit on and impress. She's laughing at me. I'm humiliated. That's, that was <laughs> my, big, my big first lesson and don't listen to idiots. <laughs> Think for yourself. Think, do I really need, am I a plant? No. <laughs> I, don't, I probably don't need this. <laughs> question everything. Isn't that what they said? Question, the yeah. Question, question everything, but only, really the only the important stuff. And that was, that's the important thing. <laughs> How have we gone all these years and not heard that story? No, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I, we're, all, we're all guilty of doing dumb stuff. And you just got to learn your lesson when you do the dumb thing and then tell other people not to repeat it. That's all you can do. <laughs> That's all you can do. So, Justin, what, what supplements are you taking right now? Uh, I take fish oil. Um, I, I was recently taking a lot yeah. of different stuff just because just trying stuff out, trying mm-hmm. to see what works, I guess, you know. Research. <laughs> freaking guinea pig. I'm my own guinea pig, too. I, yeah. I, cut, I cut everything out. Um, I'm taking fish oil. Um, I still take ZMA. I'm mm-hmm. kinda, I've taken ZMA for years because I, I found out that I had a, a zinc deficiency, mm-hmm. and it really helped my sleep. Um, like like, like no, you just got blood work done? and Noticeable difference, yeah. Okay. I got, like, back when I had good insurance, I got a ridiculous amount of blood work done. <laughs> kind of like on the whole Rob Wolf tip. Mm-hmm. And... Um, found out some things and um but really that's that's all i take i mean 
I try not to do a pre-workout unless I'm just like, for whatever reason, for that day, just dead or get up in the morning. See, Doug, we juice. We ain't got to worry about that. That's right. <laughs> He's everyone, talking about juicing everyone, vegetables. Everyone thinks we're on service now. <laughs> oh, I thought you guys were talking about supplements. I mean, yeah, I'm going to take the diamond ball. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I say that every day now. I'm juicing now. I feel great. I forget <laughs> to say I'm juicing actual vegetables and fruits. Jack LaLanne. <laughs> I'm real, Jack LaLanne style. That's right. <laughs> of course you're going to feel great. You got a gram of test running through your vein. Uh, actual, <laughs> feel awesome. Actual juice, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Literally <laughs> juice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the juice is really spreading around the group. Everyone's picking it up. I love it. It's fucking awesome. Beat juice for president. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Quick story. So on Wednesday, I ran out of carrots. So I was like, oh, I'll just double my beats. So we, we were having this workout at Shelby Farms. It's like a 25-minute workout in the heat. It's like 100 degrees. Mm-hmm. And so Fourth of July wad. Fourth of July wad. I, I'm like, oh, we're out of carrots. We'll just do more beets. Well, I didn't know that if you drink too much beet juice, it'll make you sick. So I drink this beet juice, and how then many, how many beets worth? Like two beets, I, three like four. beets. Oh god! And actually, when I split it, mm. and then I had raw eggs on top of that. <laughs> so then that didn't have anything to do with it. Was it just it? beet? No, juice? I do raw eggs pretty regularly. Was it just was beet? the beets and raw eggs? The beets and ra- no, I've never done that many beets before. So I, like, I'll, I go to the bathroom and do I the, just do like the cut beets. loose, and it hurts so bad. Like my stomach was just <laughs> no, my stomach was killing me. Like I crawl into bed with the cold sweats, and Ashley's like are you going to make it? I'm like, no, like I'm, that's what a workout. I mean, I'm going to make it in life, but, uh, I'm going to persevere. I won't die. I, just go on without me. Go do the workout. I'll be dead when you get back, but it's okay. Get your fitness on. So four beasts worth of juice. She, large. uh, she takes off and goes, and, uh, they're, they're out there. And I finally, I'm like, Oh, I feel better. So I get out there and I run up, you know, right before the no warm up. And right before the workout, it's a partner wad. And I'm like, dude, I think I'm going to sit out. And Jason, my partner, is like, no, you have to do it with me. I don't want to lose, you know. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm not sure we're going to be the winning team. <laughs> I don't feel so that's, hot. That's where CrossFit gets a little extreme. Like, dude, you do know that if we, if we don't win this or, like, we choose not to do this because we're, we're sick – Nothing will happen as a consequence. <laughs> There'll be no consequences to not winning. You know that, right? <laughs> so, so I'm like, I'm, he's like, I'm like, no, the, the no. Holiday for fun, water. We park. go back and forth, and I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh man, you've done stuff way harder than this. Don't be a pussy. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> so we take off running up up this hill, and we do all this stuff, and um, I'm going. I'm like, man, I I don't feel good at all. I didn't really warm up. Whatever, screw it. So. Halfway through the workout, I'm like, uh-oh. And I get, I walk out of the side, and I just start hurling. I get, like, probably 20 good pulls total, but I got three good throw-ups. Like, so, just, so you actually got in the mindset that, no, I think I can do this. Oh, yeah. And so I throw up, and I, it's just red. It's just, oh, yeah. It's beat red. Um, <laughs> Please tell me you got it on camera. It just looks like you're throwing up blood. I wish, dude. I wish. <laughs> we can we can re, we can redo that. When you invite when you invite beats to the party, everything turns red. It doesn't matter what else you put in your juice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I throw up and then and then I I walk back over and Jason's just standing there like, what are you doing? You should be doing burpees. And he's like <laughs> he's like, what? oh, I thought we were done. I'm like, no, just go, just go. So we. I start doing more burpees and we, we finish the wad. And it comes out the same color on and, the other side. And I am, I <laughs> usually after you get done working out, like five minutes later, you feel fine. I'm still just miserable. I'm like, I feel like I'm going to die. Like, I'm, I can't cool off. I'm drinking all the water I can. I'm not cooling off. If someone hands me some ice water and I start feeling better. I come to find out, I talked to a man and she was like, oh yeah, last time I drank a bunch of beet juice, I got sick. And that was at your house. Mm. We thought she drank too much alcohol. Oh, no, yeah. she drank too much beet juice and was hugging the toilet. Oh, that's what happened at that party? Yeah. McGoldrick and and Brandy, they both did the same thing. They had to leave the party early because they felt sick. They thought it was just from juicing. All right, so let's break this down. Holy and shit! And then Marcy comes and tells me that too much beet, too much beets can be bad for me. You, you get like, sick when you mix beets with raw eggs, and the other person that you know that got sick mixed it when they mixed or they mixed it with a lot of alcohol. Right? Maybe you just shouldn't <laughs> mix beets with anything. I agree. How much? I'm what, not what touching is it, beets ever what again. What is it in the beets that could be bad? Does anybody know? I, I'm, I'm not sure. And I how have much? No idea. Like Doug, put, how much? I put do a beet in my juice every day. I never feel bad. I, I don't think, either. I don't well, think no, all I usually beets put, are bad. I usually put a beet in. I yeah. think it's just the but dubstep ones. I did too much. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what do you normally put? Oh, the in your beets, drink? beets by Dre. Carrots, beets, and celery with a little bit of ginger. All right. What do you normally put in? I go a beet. I go like an apple or a peach or something to add a little sweetness. Maybe a handful of strawberries. 
celery, all the greens I can shove in there, a little ginger. Uh, what else? I'm doing like uh, watercress. Oh, when, really? you say, when you say beets or when you say greens, are you literally putting roughage in there? Or do yeah, you have like, like uh, the peptide? spinach, young crispy baby spinach works good. Bok choy works amazingly well. Mm-hmm. Like things like collard greens don't work so good unless you wrap them around something with a body enough to get through the blade. Otherwise, they kind of clump up and slow the blade down. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, usually I put enough mm-hmm. greens in there to get at least like a like a half a cup <clears throat> of green juice in the bottom. Then I throw in the carrots and the celery and the Cucumber's awesome, and yeah, I mean, it's it's just fantastic. Once you get over the initial like this kind of grassy flavor, bro. Once you get over the initial like <laughs> vegetable flavor, it's really so much better than any other juice you've ever had, especially with carrot in there. Or and peach is amazing. Yeah, Add but, a peach with any vegetable you want, and you're gonna have a good time. Yeah, I haven't tried peaches or strawberries yet. Strawberries really yield good. a lot of juice. The peach it, the peach comes out looking just like the carrot juice, sort of thick and velvety, gives you that texture. Yeah. I stick and if I if I'm gonna drink just the juice, I think I, I sort of added coconut mm-hmm. milk. So, because I'm pretty sure I guess I was reminded of a study this week where the guy's talking about like if you eat a, if you eat a salad, you put fat free dressing on, you're kind of dumb because if you eat that, there's you know half the nutrients in there or whatever are only gonna be liberated if you have some fat with it. So you should probably put full fat ranch on there. Of course, all the comments were, I know ranch tastes good on vegetables for a reason, bro. Uh, but yeah, if I, <laughs> it's called olive oil. Just put olive oil on your salad, dummy. Yeah, or anything. But yeah, I I add a little coconut milk in there. If I'm not just calling gonna, you dummy. Just if I'm else. just gonna drink the juice, I put a little coconut fat in there too to kind of help me make more of it. Mm. Yeah, yep. it's it's awesome. I basically put anything in there I can I can grab. Yeah, I just that's my attitude. Before I, I'm I'm almost certain I was not getting enough vegetables in because who can eat like like that TED talk? The girl's like, what I want you to do is eat <laughs> 17 plates. Of vegetables a day. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how you'll be healthy. No one can do that, bro. No one can do that. You're, I don't even know if you're doing it. It's impossible. Will you sit around and professionally eat salads? <laughs> like, who can sit there like, oh my god, the eighth plate of salad greens that's today? What we're, that's what we're supposed to say when we're selling uh, when we're selling vitamins. You're like, mm-hmm. I don't, should I take vitamins or should I? You know, you're supposed to be like, well, do you eat five to seven servings of fruits and vegetables every day? No. No. So take by this vitamin. Actually, I would love to hear other examples of how you're supposed to sell supplements. What, what, what do they tell you? Like, what, what are your tactics? Actually, I, the guy that I work for, <laughs> secret. he'll probably yeah. he'll probably hey. never see this. So it, hey, listen, I mean, take this. Or you're going to get cancer, bro. Good or bad about him, but I mean, he's he actually knows the stuff. I mean, he's yeah. um and he he's very like big from, from on, a sales point of view, or from just like he just knows a lot about nutrition and, yeah, and training. He's or a what? strength coach, and yeah. I mean, he's you know has you know. Went to school for strength and uh, nutrition. Um, I don't think he has his master's in nutrition, but um, mm. but uh, he uh, he's not really on the same idea of, of like you know the GNC big boxes or whatever. He's like, look, when somebody comes in, you mm. know, when the, if they ask, you know, if they're eighteen and they ask for like an Oxyelite Pro or something <laughs> with like three dimethyl amylamine, which we all know is horrible, right? Oh, I call like, it, I go, it's, it's my one three. And by awful, you mean awesome. It's my, <laughs> I call it my dimethyl meth meth. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. I, I take it, my triple meth. I take a hit probably once every two weeks. Yeah. I'll take one of those. I mean, if I I'm having a I took two this day. morning just for, for <laughs> nothing, just to do it. But yeah. he's, you know, like. Uh, DMA <laughs> is the stuff in Jack 3D for anyone in the audience that didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. But by why it's still. Available as banned. Neurocore and God, it's and good. Oxy Elite Pro and a mm-hmm. lot of a lot of other stuff. They ban Not every every good drug that's good. They they they, they ban it. It's gonna come back Shit. because what what a lot of people don't know is <laughs> that a couple products are getting away with putting geranium root right. extract on there, which is don't, don't call three it, dimethyl. Don't call it the drug. Just call it the plant. Yeah. Well, it's natural. It's geranium root. Yeah. So, but it was and, the same with. I mean, what you're saying that those ones won't be illegal. They'll get away with it for a little bit because it's oh. called something else. They'll probably ban it again, I'm sure. Poli- you but- make the politicians happy that they can say they, they saved somebody's life by banning <laughs> this fucking harmless thing. Yeah. And then everything else is fine. Oh, it's geranium. No one cares about geranium. Somebody died on it. Yeah, but it was 120 degrees outside, and they hadn't drank anything in four days, and they were doing PT in Afghanistan. I mean, like... It was the same. It was the same um, thing that, that when they. Creatine. It was the same yeah. thing when they came down on ephedra. Man, ephedra is one of the better things ever. You took one, <laughs> and you went from wanting to sleep to wanting to train for three hours. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just a, a clearly a magical thing. And some kid goes, "Well, one's good. The whole bottle's better," and dies of a heart attack. And I shit. did that when I was fifteen, I think. 
Yeah. Yes. I, definitely, I definitely took my share fair that. Yeah. Share fair? I remember. Your share fair. Fair share. And my share fair? My share fair. Before, <laughs> I took my share fair of that stuff. Before every powerlifting awesome. power workout I was doing in my prime there, I would take, you know, a handful of ephedra and then a bunch of no-dos. <laughs> and then you'd, you'd cough and, and what? Like, <laughs> spasm. You'd spasm. Your stomach would be spasm. Like, and then you do those things. But you'd take, you get nose. huge squat attempts, bro. It was great. <laughs> it <worked> great. <laughs> All right. He tastes a little I blood never, in your throat. That's okay. That. We're, we're all joking here. We're not. None of us are no, I was saying not, go I'm not and joking. Out. That's what I did. No, 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 we're not. We're not. We're not. <laughs> is this is not a recommendation. We're not recommending this. Do as yeah. we say, not as we do. Well, we cur- none and of us not, currently not as, not take as we a lot did of when stuff. we were 16. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good point. When you're when you're 22, you can take a lot of things and get kind of your, your liver is robust. You yeah, can, just listen to what we say. It. We've tested all this stuff out. We've seen the results. Oh, it's totally not know. necessary. Yeah, no, I mean, just drink a cup of coffee. You're to, fine. To get back to your point, or yeah. what you're asking about is, I mean, he doesn't really have a lot of set like spiels. You know, mm. I mean, there's oh, okay. a couple things that he told me that you know, because I came in not being an anti supplement guy, but you know, kind of coming from my background, I wasn't really all about. Let's take everything we can to get as much edge as we can. I was like more like, you know, eat real food, sleep well, you sure. know, drink lots of water, whatever. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple things that, you know, I've learned a lot since I've been there. And he's just kind of shown me that. It hasn't really been a lot of spills. But that is one that he did tell me. You know, it's like we try and get everybody, everybody that walks out the door, you want them on a vitamin and a fish oil. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. So, And I don't think that's so bad. No, that's probably so, good for good for the general population or for... Yeah. Even most people that are hardcore trainers. Yeah, yeah. I, that's pretty much what we we uh, first recommend people take is fish oil and then vitamin D, just because most people are deficient in vitamin D. You guys take the. And I was taking vitamin D for a while, but I, I don't know. I, I you get blood work done ever on yeah. That, look at your vitamin was, D levels it was on there too, and it wasn't really. I was taking vitamin D at the time of the blood work, oh, so it was oh. normal. So I don't know if I was loaded again. I've stopped. I haven't taken it in about three weeks now. Do you get a lot of sunlight? Um, now I do. Yeah, that's kind of why I, I stopped taking it. So. It might be fun. Before yeah. you spend all day in your corporate hovel yes. working and Over. not getting any natural sunlight. Still... <laughs> so. so you're not, the only thing you're taking now is fish oil. No, I, I, I take fish oil, ZMA, and I will do a pre-workout sometimes. I try not to do stuff with like proprietary blends. I think we were talking about that the other day. Rice flour. Um, so I mean, <laughs> you say pre-workout, you mean like stimulants in particular? I, I no, not, that's not like I a workout. I try drink. not to take something as a stimulant. Um, if I'm doing like a really, really like lactic workout, I'll yeah. take like a beta alanine. Oh sure. Um, if I'm doing like a, like a heavy one a single attempt or just a heavy something, I'll I'll take like a creatine. Um, and sometimes if I'm just like dead for whatever reason, like I was saying, I'll, I'll, I'll mix it with like a third of a dose of some type of stimulant, like a not plug, but like, you know, Inno explode or, or something like that. So you don't just take creatine wow. and beta alanine like on a daily basis. You just, you only take well, it when I was, you're going to do something. Heavy. I was loading. I was loading for a while. And, um, and I don't really think it's bad. I mean, I, there may be some negative effects, I guess, but a, I didn't notice any, bloating from monohydrates that everybody talks about like it's the first thing when you say creatine and be like oh you get bloated um and I, I i loaded for a while but now i i really i only take it for at that one time and i mean i, I just work off my normal atp the rest of the time hmm. okay um, but it's not all the time You're going natural yeah, I, you don't need these cheating things. <laughs> Cheaters taking all this creatine and shit. <laughs> I've honestly just been kind of messing around with it and see whatever whatever works best. Yeah, I mean, if you if you, if you took a lot of it in the past and you, now you don't take it much now and you still have good training, who cares? Yeah. I mean, if you're not competing and looking for that two percent edge, it doesn't matter. Yeah, well, it's like although almost... although just to interject and and derail the conversation, which is my pr- primary skill on this show, <laughs> isn't there all that evidence though that Doug may know more than me. <clears throat> really, I only heard like a secondhand conversation from the good old Dr. Kreider one time. That really, mm. there could be a lot of evidence that creates and protects against brain injury and neurological degeneration. Like I know. Age. You know, they've done a lot of research on creatine with, with elderly populations, and it seems to help older people, I don't know how I want to say this, like think better or maintain their intelligence. Which is like, pretty if, if curious. Like, I mean. Yeah, they're going for huge PRs, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, if, if you're loading the creatine on a daily basis, you know, you're not... Well, I guess not you load like, it you mean, you, mean, you mean taking it consistently? Consistency? Yeah. Consistently? Excuse me. Jesus. Yeah. Or you mean that's, actually, that's what we actually call it in the loading? the business. 
Uh, yeah, well, well yeah, so like, I think about creatine, I think about loading, I think about taking like multiple doses multiple times a day for a period of like five days and then you've loaded and then you just take it consistently slide, from yeah. there on out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Please drop a little teaspoon in your shake in the morning yeah. or your Jack Loon produced Or uh, they Are they saying juice. just taking like five grams a day and not, yeah. and not getting... That's exactly. They're saying it. just taking it consistent, gotcha. consistently. Yeah, I've had that conversation. I'm a lot of trouble with that word today. Yeah, I've had that talk with Brian. He's like, you, you need to just take creatine just as you would a, a vitamin. It's kind of the way he's been seeing it lately too. He he was doing studies with creatine and Parkinson's patients. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, I think a couple of saying, strength training. I think he was seeing good mm-hmm. benefits to that. Yeah, for, I, I don't know all the exact results. And considering but it's I know basically that they found something <clears throat> heavily tested and basically harmless, it's probably. A good thing is to toss in your shake as a daily yeah. supplement. Yeah, really. the thing about creatine yeah. is, is if you're not, don't take the stuff with a pr- proprietary blend that happens to have creatine in it. Take creatine yeah, on its like own. a $10 it's jug super, of creatine. It's super cheap. It's not going to harm you. Uh, more than likely, you're going to see some benefits. So why not take it? Yeah, because you, you don't need to buy all that like four times the price pH balance, micronized. Oh, no, 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 all right. No, Get no, the stuff that costs $20. Stuff, sure. Yeah, $20 for and six last months you, supply. It'll last you, yeah, three to six months. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's not going to hurt you. It can only help you. Yeah, any any name brand, middle of the road, inexpensive creator. Don't get like a create and explode Chinese now or something with like half half <laughs> uh, mercury content or something. But Plug now sports. Now, Plug now. Now sports, is that the... The, all, they the, have everything. The orange looks label. The same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, stuff. yeah. That, dude, that stuff's fantastic. They're great because they don't spend any money on marketing. Full at disclosure: all. I don't. I don't get anything from them. We we no get way. That on None Amazon. of us do. Which company were we talking about? The now all, bright now. orange containers. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Like I, I, I had to get a little thing of their protein from Whole Foods because I was out of mine. It's like it was su- super flavorless, but good quality. Uh, no unnecessary ingredients. They're pretty much everything I've ever had from them seems fantastic. Yeah. I have no affiliation for them, but yeah, I got it when we had the conversation with Brad Pope about looking for that label, and they've got like four or five labels on there attesting to the quality of the product. And I've always <clears> seen <throat> nothing but good discussions around that brand, so yeah, that's probably a good one to get. We we actually have a client. Is the reason why I said that we have a a client not at the gym, but that, a regular that comes into the place, and he's going to school for chemistry or whatever, and they brought in a couple of their products to run what it through what the. Geek. Whatever the heck it is, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> whatever that, whatever it is that they, what is it, mass spectrometer? I don't know what they put it in. For. Sounds right. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> the Samo flange flux um, capacitor. Yeah, they put it in this, that, <laughs> and they said it was. I mean, just like to the milla. It was one one was. ingredient basically. Yeah. Like you can see that graphed out. This is creatine. Yeah. So uh, beta alanine is the same way. I don't think there's any reason not to just take that on a daily basis. Speaking of that, do we want to go to point two about Let's this? Let's do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I want to say something about beta alanine. If somebody has never taken it and they take a full oh, yeah. dose of it. It gets you high, man. They just they, <laughs> they don't need to get freaked out when they feel like there's a million pins and needles all over their skin. Because it's actually this thing that's like paranesia or something like that. It's all the blood flowing to the top of your skin. Mm-hmm. And it freaked me out the first time I took it. They actually, I was like, what's going it, on? I thought I was having a panic attack. Me too. If you've ever done I, that. I had no idea the first time I took it that that was yeah. going to happen. Uh-huh. I was sitting on my computer. My, I was like, my hands fell asleep. Yeah. And then I, I walked in the kitchen. I was like, my feet fell asleep too. Yeah. I'm dying. weird. I'm and dying. I was like, oh, I just took that shit. Uh, <laughs> straight to Google. <laughs> Don't worry. My, my, my what bro, would you have my, done if you Googled it and it said, you will die? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no! 911. When that happens, Dude. turn on Dark Side of the Moon and just relax. Stay at the ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Take advantage of it. Grab hello, some ice cream. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Don't freak out. Well, like, I took, I think I took two grams. So two scoops, because you get a one gram scoop. They're just tiny, tiny scoops. Mm-hmm. And uh, my brother, on the other <laughs> hand, he couldn't find his scooper either there wasn't one in there or he just didn't look for it very long and it said two scoops and so he just assumed two spoonfuls and so he just took a regular spoon and took two <laughs> scoops and he probably i'm gonna get at, i'm gonna guess and say he took five or five or ten times what i took my first time and your first time you, you take bait out and you feel a little tingling and then if you take it consistently then the tingling will kind of yeah, go away you really won't notice it anymore after a couple weeks yeah. and in his case though he took it and then went to the gym and he said he was like halfway to the gym and his face was on fire. And he just like turned straight <laughs> around. Like he couldn't even make it home. He pulled like into the parking lot of a grocery store, ran to the bathroom and had shit. Let, 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 me, <laughs> let me disclose here. The recommended dosage for beta alanine for an average like 200 pound male is like 3,200 milli or 3.2 grams. Yeah. So if he took like, that's like three times like probably. Five probably 10 grams. Yeah, <laughs> he took a lot. 
So I don't even know what that would do to you. Does does his arm fall asleep on a regular basis now? <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Long-term yeah, yeah, side the effects. Stroke. The barbell the shrug recommendation is to use the provided scoop and follow directions. That <laughs> yeah. Directions are directions for a reason. Yeah, actually, I, I want to clarify that real quick because I know we talked about these supplements and then everyone's going to be like, well, what should I take or how much should I take? Uh, I, what I personally recommend is take the scoop of, of creatine every day. It'll be like between three and five grams. And then there's no reason not to. And then beta alanine is kind of the same boat. Take it every day. And you can take up to – the bigger guys should be taking like six grams total a day, but no more than two grams at a time. If you take more than two grams at a time, it's going to – you're going to get that super tingle sensation. Some people um, like that, though. So – and it's not uh, – a lot of people think, oh, I feel the tingle. I can go work out now, and I'm going to get the benefit from it. It's something that builds up over your system over weeks and months. So you may not actually get performance – benefits out of something like beta alanine or creatine for like six to eight weeks so that's just a quick rundown of what i know about these supplements so i noticed it on my first workout. those of you that look at for answers on the show there you go <laughs> mm-hmm. i don't do beta alanine but i like the creatine man really i, I, mean, I, I love beta alanine i think beta alanine is just fantastic well maybe i should take it then because you recommended it <laughs> that's right oh now that you're doing crossfit stuff you should Maybe you're right. Yeah, if, man. You're, if you're better endurance, it, you're talking about a, if 150 you're doing, wall balls for time. Ugh. God, that sucks. Beta Don't al- talk about beta it. Beta alanine is exactly what you want. For That's early. true. Yeah, I right. I had the only thing that made that workout worse was I got ten like ten reps into it, and I'm already like, this sucks. This sucks. <laughs> I hate this. And then <laughs> like, I'm and only then, I only then, got 15 times more of this. To and then go. <laughs> all of a sudden, somebody <laughs> thought that they they. I, I looked like I needed motivation, so fucking McGoldrick walks over. <laughs> it's like, come on, bro. You've only got 140 more to go. Let's go. <laughs> it's being serious. I go, are you, are you insane? <laughs> he screamed at me for 140 wall balls. <laughs> and God bless him. It helped me a lot. But I was like, this is, this is not going to be He's a, a fun great experience. cheerleader. This is not going to be a fun experience. So All maybe- right, guys. Let's take a quick break. We're going to come back and discuss uh, some more topics. All right, maybe I'll give me some beta alanine today at the gym. Mm. Actually, we're All right, Mike Bledsoe here with Technique One. I'm going to be talking a little bit about the shrug. And there's a lot of debate out there over whether the shrug is part of the second pool or the third pool. I like to think about it as being part of both. If you don't finish with a shrug, that bar tends to be in front of the athlete and not back where it needs to be where they need to catch it. Also, if, they, if they're not shrugging underneath the bar, and the third pull, the third pull is getting underneath the bar. If they're not shrugging underneath, especially with the snatch, their shoulders tend to not be engaged during the catch. So when you do your snatch, you want to shrug, pulling underneath the bar. The shrug initiates the third pull underneath, and you're going to catch. So it being part of the second or third pull really doesn't matter. Uh, if you're not getting a good shrug on the snatch, you won't be getting in a good position for for the third pull. And one of the drills I really like to work on getting the shrug going, especially during warm-ups. If you have a hard time getting that shrug in during the lift, then throwing these in your warm-ups will be super helpful. Uh, I call them tall cleans or tall snatches. So a lot of people uh, will call it tall clean or tall snatch, and there'll be a little bit of a hip flexion and then hip extension. I like to, for, especially for athletes that have a hard time shrugging under, underneath the bar, I like for them to actually start with hips fully extended. And a lot of people have a hard time with that. So what I have people do is actually flex their glutes at the top. That way they can't bend at the hips at all. So if you have to flex your glutes to get in that position, then go for it. And I'll show you with a snatch first. So I'm gonna start here. My glutes are going to be nice and tight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate the third pull because all I'm working on with a tall snatch is a third pull. I'm going to initiate this with a shrug up, okay? So I'm going to shrug. I'm going to get that little bit of plantar flexion like we talked about the other day. And we're going to get underneath. So I'm going to shrug and get underneath. Notice here that my shoulders are pretty much in a shrug position here. I caught it in that same position, okay? I'll show you another one from the front. Be here, I'm gonna initiate with the shrug, and then I'm good. When you do the tall snatch or the tall clean, your feet will start in a pulling position. You'll get that plantar flexion like I talked about in the previous video. You, you may move back, you may stay in the same place. But it's gonna be a shrug, move your feet in position, and drive your butt straight down. 
A lot of people make a mistake of sitting back too much. Don't sit back. Sit straight down, okay? So, do some tall cleans, tall snatches, and improve your third pull. I said, I mean, for lactic stuff. You decided now to sell $100. Cordova, and now, back to episode... <laughs> we gotta have you, like, we need to record him. Episode. And now, back to Barbell Shrugged. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, sometimes when I go to a podcast and they've got something like that, I'm like, boop, off, <laughs> yeah. next one. Like if, it's, if it's like uber produced. Well, like if, if they're serious one, yeah. about it, but if you just got to picture me going, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Microphones are fun. <laughs> they are. Yeah. Um, all right, so next topic, we're back. We, uh, we now don't have Doug. Doug had to go open the gym. He's always had Sunday duty. Oh, duty. Yeah, I said duty. Um, he got paralyzed by taking too much beta alanine, and now he's in the hospital. <laughs> beta alanine and beet juice overdose. Uh, the other thing we want to talk about was uh, multi-level marketing uh, supplements and in your gym. And the uh, devil. Uh, yeah. I, I personally think if you uh, mi mix multi-level marketing with any business, any like regular business that you have going, going on. Yeah, you're, yeah, one, you'll go to hell. And then, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Aren't you like two clicks away from being a Bernie Madoff of your gym <laughs> if you do that shit? <laughs> well, I mean, you are selling real products, so it's not, I don't think it's that bad, but the problem. You're going in that direction. The, prob the problem with most multi level marketing is that you're selling the same exact products you can get anywhere else at a higher price. What's going on? Sorry, that's my wife calling me. No, let it go. That was kind of moving. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you're doing multi level marketing, you can get those products at Walmart. And. Or anywhere else. Muscle and Fortress. You're just selling it at a higher price. And people get sucked into it because they're like, oh, I can make money doing this. I like the products. It's something I would buy anyways. Now, this, this is the mentality that people have. I would buy that anyways. I need that. Um, and if I could sell it to my friends, I'll make money. And I'll be doing them a favor. I'll do that and Mary Kay and I'll be set. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, th that's usually what happens in multi-level marketing. And then with the supplements and you bring that into your gym, you really... I have a problem with it because it's taking the focus off the training and the education that's going on. And the supplements, like we were talking about this, is Advocare. They're not any better than any other. You know, you can go into vitamin shop and get the same exact supplements. And if anything, they're not, they're not as good as some other supplements that I'm familiar with. So Still inferior to food. Yes. No. Except for that Sparks. That stuff is awesome. Mm. Totally kidding. I don't, well, I, I, I don't know. I think the, the, all the, their products the still golden, have sucralose in them. It's their, yeah, it's their. There's still the golden rule, right? Like the eighty twenty, or however you want to phrase it, where the 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 bulk of the things you need to be concerned with and put eighty percent or ninety percent of your efforts into are sleeping enough, eating the best food you can get your hands on, training smart, progressively, as hard as you can, resting when you should. If you just do those simple things, you're going to get almost all the success you probably could get. And everything else is nice, and it's sugar on top, but that's, that's it's, what, not constant, it's not going to make or break your progress. That's the big thing that, that bugs me is that people look at supplements, and they completely forget the name. Like, they're supplements. It's supposed to be supplemental. Supplemental. To, yeah, it's like, how many, how many sets of glute ham rays should I do? You know, ten, ten sets of five, five sets of ten. They, they, you put all the focus on weird things in your training. But they don't when squat. You, when you don't do the enough <laughs> squats or cleans or whatever you want to get better at. Like, you... You're missing the whole thing. That those are called assistance exercises for a very good reason. They assist, they help, but they you shouldn't be obsessed with things like that. Yeah, another thing too is people try to they'll put a lot of emphasis on the supplements, and I find that people like you know if they do like a a challenge or something like that regarding like a supplement. I think Advocare has like a 24 day challenge or something. People, you know, they're obviously gonna watch their diet better. They're gonna be doing all this other stuff and they see results. I'm like, well, you just really focused on you for 24 days or however long yeah. you really focused on yourself. You, you probably didn't have anything. You probably <laughs> trained more. You probably ate better. And then you took these supplements too. That pre-workout and the oolong mock tea you were taking probably didn't have that much of an effect on it. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing with like Nutrisystems. You went on a plan, you ate only what they gave you. You got serious about it and you had some success because of that. It wasn't anything really special about the, the program. You just adapted some kind of plan. And right. it, plans are always pretty good if they're decent. Yeah. I, I think actually that's one in, in our facility. We're kind of, I mean, we're kind of trying to get better about that is putting people on a plan for nutrition instead of just informing them, actually trying to 
you know, implement a plan. So we're, yeah. we're doing, uh, we're putting together programs now that are, it's less science and more, you know, function. Jeez. Hang on one second. Getting robbed, Mike. Shut up! Is that dog real or just in my head? <laughs> Speed <laughs> Alanine's really got me jacked. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so don't, don't worry yourself with nutritional plans and dietary schemes that seem too complicated and good, too good to be true because they probably are. I think the main problem with multi-level marketing and Avocare is the people that are selling it, not even the product. Some of the products aren't bad. Like you said, they're not any better than the other ones, but they're not bad. You can get but all the, those. The people that are selling it have else. no idea what they're talking about. And I mean, so if you go to a place that somebody knows what they're talking about and they've done the research and they know their stuff, rather it be at a gym or like a legit sports nutrition company, um, or supplement store or whatever, then you're going to get given the right product and get given how to take it properly instead of just saying, here, take this, 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 and this because I make that much money off of it. I think that's that's my big quorum with, or quarrel. What the hell's quorum? What's quorum? I, I, know, I, I know what you're saying, bro. Yeah. <laughs> New word. Yeah, Start but, using quorum. it. <laughs> quorum. Not my quorum, bro. <laughs> <laughs> You want to hit the next question? All right, next question. Um, yeah, that, that was, that's a topic that's been brought up like several times over the last couple of weeks with us. And I know that you and I had a, a nice heated discussion about it. Uh, and uh, so I got some questions off the Twitters. Uh, someone hit me up yesterday with some stuff. Perfect timing. Uh, they were asking about uh, knee sleeves, wrist wraps, and belts. So... You know, whether they're necessary or what, what's just, the deal. They, they were just why, wanting to know why people are wearing them. I think they're walking well, around the, the gym. the knee sleeves go here. <laughs> <laughs> and the belts go <laughs> 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 All right. All right. Coming from the world of powerlifting, I guess that, that's a huge issue. And one I'm pretty familiar with. So I guess I'll take this one on. If you don't mind. Go for Michael it. Bledsoe. Go for I mean, it. Really, you're, you're always going to see people use all kinds of different sorts of equipment in their training. Sometimes they become crutches. Sometimes they're used out of habit. Sometimes they're required in order to compete. So in this case, we're talking about little supplemental items that people use in their training. And really the reason why is that, I, mean, I guess with any, with any piece of equipment, it's going to either help you a little bit. It's going to help you warm up. It's going to help support you and maybe enable. Then sometimes you take it too far like in powerlifting, and you can use things that the only reason why you're using them is to improve performance. It's like squat suits, bench shirts. Uh, like in swimming, you'll see like shark skin designed suits that I don't think they allow anymore, but They're basically illegal. they, yeah. they cut down your that swim awesome. times. Like, like last year, everybody set world records at the last uh, Olympic games. Mm -hmm. So the things that are just, you just wear them to do better at your sport. But really when we're talking the appropriate use of a belt, which I guess we can go into more detail on, wrist straps, knee sleeves. We're talking about things that basically can help probably extend your lifting career, maybe help uh, enable better training sessions, but don't add too much to your performance. So the reason why I wear knee sleeves are really a light, very light knee wrap on just about anything where I'm going to bend my knee. They do a good job of pro providing light support. They can help capture and keep heat in your knees so you can in increase the viscosity or decrease it, decrease the viscosity mm -hmm. of the, the, the fluids in your knee, help your knee bend a bit better, keep it warm, keep it mobile, give a little support. You do deep squats and stuff, which could be useful. If you're an older lifter who has a little bit of arthritis or pain in the wrist when you catch cleans or you do bench presses or presses or push-ups, a light supportive wrist strap can help you do a better job of your training and keep you doing it for a longer period of time so it's prudent to wear. I've got... I've got that exact same issue. Yeah, I mean, I if, if your wrist hurts you when you do a jerk, wearing a light wrap, just give a little bit of support, will help you jerk more frequently, get better at jerks, and keep doing jerks if that's what you want to do. Keeps the sweat off your hands, too. Belts is probably the most <laughs> controversial thing because it's really you, most of the time you wear that to lift more. But my attitude is if you can wear something that will immediately help you lift 30 more pounds, that's a good thing. <clears throat> and a, a belt for heavy squat attempts or a, a Velcro belt for cleans and snatches because it doesn't, it doesn't get in the way. There's nothing wrong with, so long as you don't use it on everything. If you warm up to 9% without a belt and you get a little unstable, a little uncomfortable, you put a light belt on, it helps you do a couple heavier top sets. You will get stronger because of that. You'll be a better lifter. It will help you maybe cut down a little of the injury risk, although it's probably not a big deal. But if you use these things responsibly... Yeah, a belt should not be used to reduce 
the risk of injury. Yeah, it doesn't really. It, 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 really, you use it because you can lift more weight. And if you do that at the right time, you'll get stronger because you use the belt. This is the bottom line. But but are you against squat <clears throat> suits and bench shirts and all that? If you're going to compete in powerlifting, you, uh, you, you need to learn how to use it if that's what you want to do. But there's some there's all. some rationales too. Like if I have a shoulder injury, I can use a light bench shirt to maybe cut down on that, and I can still keep benching. But my attitude now, I used to think that. Not, my attitude now is that you can train better to avoid the shoulder injury. Yeah. And you I, should be doing full range of motion benches. Like even like the slingshot, which a guy sells, I, it's a good idea if you're power thing. If you're not power thing, you probably shouldn't use anything like that because you need to be able to touch your chest with a bar and push the bar off your chest, bottom line, with no support. <clears throat> so you need a better approach to training if you have shoulder pain. I, I got a labrum tear a couple years ago, and um, and I was worried about bench, and I was looking for different things to help it or whatever. But really, it was just through some other accessory you know, training exercise or whatever, and I pretty much bench. Yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're benching enough to where it's causing pain and you're trying to bench two, three times a week, one, you need to start pressing overhead again and doing incline presses, things that are going to be easier on your shoulders and are better exercises to begin with. Yeah. And if you have a big-time shoulder injury like that, the last thing you'd be worried about is bench pressing, which is yeah. a good exercise, but useless compared to things like standing presses and squats and everything else we do and that's what i focused on because at the time i was really just mainly doing crossfit i wasn't doing a so lot like like we were talking about with assistance work and supplements like kind of this this kind of equipment is kind of the same thing if you got a little bit of a sore knee or you you feel more comfortable lifting in a pair of knee sleeves or a light knee wrap you should wear those it's not a big deal it's not going to change a lot of stuff but you should wear them if your wrists are a little tight and sore when you do push-ups or jerks wear a wrist wrap it's not going to be in the world they're inexpensive put it on you'll feel great you'll train better if you're really working on your strength, you want to improve your deadlift and squat, get your little inexpensive belt that's going to last you. Wear it when you get to your very top sets. Get stronger because of it. Don't put too much worry in it. Don't, don't. The people who, who have the attitude like, I don't wear any of that stuff because it's cheating, is, is sort of silly. That same guy's wearing weightlifting shoes and $100 calf sleeves and all this shit. I mean, it's just, it's just sort of silly to talk about cheating. Wear what you're comfortable with. Wear what helps you perform better. Wear what gives you confidence and just have fun with it. I mean, bottom line. Real quick, I, this is only like semi-relevant. And I know we don't want to get off on a tangent here, but you're kind of the squat guru or Jedi or whatever. So I, <laughs> oh, used to. We're, we're talking about just improving performance. Do you believe in low bar back squatting? You do that a lot? or uh, I, I do it because that's really where I can hold the bar. I'm a very, I have a very curved spine. I'm a very forward postured guy. Years of bad posture, but really a lot of power thing where I did a lot of low bar squatting. So I'm really sort of doomed. But do you, so you don't high bar don't, or mid bar? I do a little more of Olympic style squat now because I really treat the squat right now as a, as a way to build my pulling strength. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm losing weight. I'm not going to be able to set PRs in a squat probably right now. So I'm just trying to get all the range of motion I can get and get the bar a little higher. But with bar position, really the take home message is if you're going to do, if you're going to seriously try to clean and snatch, you want to get better at that you should be doing front squats and high bar back squats. Mm. Like Glenn Pinlay did in that. There's a great post on Pinlay's forum on, on back squat position. And it, it's really a common sense thing. If you're going to catch a heavy clean and stand up, you have to put your hips between your ankles. Yep. And you have to stand up straight. It's just You're not going to, like if I try to catch a clean, I'm going to have my hips back like a power out there. I'm going to pull it to my chest. I'm going to drop it every freaking time. Yeah. If, if, you're really gonna catch, if you're going to catch and stand up with a big clean or snatch... You're going to have to put your hips right between your ankles. That means you're going to have to train that position. That means you're going to have to high bar squat with your hips between your ankles. This is, this is mechanics. It's physics. Power lifting, low if you bar, want, If you so want bad. to just be a big, strong guy and train your back and get strong hips, then a low bar, Ripito-esque, power thing esque squat is going to be fine. And if you want to do just a, like a, a standard power clean, you're probably okay. No, if you just want to be a big, strong guy, it doesn't really matter too much. This is where I have a problem with like the CrossFit Level 1 certification squat that they teach. You know, they want that nice vertical shin. They teach a powerlifting squat. You know, Which is great. Uh, an air powerlifting it's squat. It's just fine, it's good. but you're not going to be good at cleans. It, it, takes, it takes stress off the knees, puts it towards the hips, and all this kind of stuff. But if you have long, if you have long femurs, you're not going to be able to accomplish that. Like, Doug was there, and they were trying to, like, you need to push your knees back. He's like, I will fall over. He's like, he's got long femurs, yeah. Yeah. period. And the thing is, is, you got all these crossfitters who are like, I got to put my butt back. Sit back, 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 back. And they're you're, trying to catch you're, snatches, you're gonna, you can't and they're, like, bent rest. forward. And got the snap. I'm like shoulder no. injuries. Put your ass right between your ankles. Problem solved. And that, 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 drop your butt straight down. And if you go to a CrossFit competition, like, and you should be trained with a high bar back squat if you're a CrossFitter. Low bar 
on occasion. I do it a few months of the year to, take, you know, give my knees a break. Um, but in competition, you're going to be doing Olympic lifts. They're, they want you squatting below parallel, which is easier it's and gonna, faster if you just drop straight down instead of sitting back. You're going to have to do If a you're a CrossFitter, you should be doing high bar back squats, front squats, some low bar. If all you're doing is low bar back squats, then you've got too much of a power li- lifting emphasis and not enough of a CrossFit emphasis. It's, it doesn't even have to do with Olympic lifting. It's just yeah, the great, the greatest illustration. Cool. We should I should forward an email to, to them as well. You know when when Penlade describes his experience training with a powerlifter versus Donnie Shankel. Mm-hmm. You know when uh, Kyle Gulledge, I think is now. Did you read yeah, that? It's I did the read greatest it. it's really practical good. explanation of the difference. Kyle, I think his name was Kyle. I remember. Yeah, it was Kyle. He was a guy who could squat seven hundred raw. He. He's a monster, monster, monster deadlifter. He did speed deadlifts with like 700 pounds. It's like that Max Aida guy you're talking about. Yeah, he could that. pull 850, huge lower back, hip strength, amazing, pretty good presser. Uh, in contrast to Donnie Shankle, who was a guy with a relatively weak back, lower back in terms of power thing, like good morning, so he probably couldn't even do that with much weight. A relatively poor squatter. I mean, compared to Kyle, he maybe only squatted 550 or six, but the guy was huge in the quads. Extremely strong in vertical positions. Good front squat at 500 for reps. And I identify with Kyle because if you're a, if you're a bent over sumo puller, good morning guy, power thing squatter, low bar squatter, forward bent over positions you're really strong at. Vertical positions like a front squat are impossible. You go from yeah. incredible strength to incredible weakness. It's that lever. And if you're going to catch a, squ- a, a squat clean with 300 pounds or more, if you're not strong in a vertical position, you're never going to amount to anything. You have to... You, you, You'll watch, be nothing. Watch a guy catch a big-time clean, and you see what position you need to be in for your squats. It, yeah. It's talking common about, sense stuff. Talking about that guy, I know we're like out of time or whatever. We can't do the last question, but I want to plug the strength seminar real quick. Um, oh, yeah, I got cool. a chance to I got a chance to watch it or whatever, and you were talking about like the Max Aida in there. That's what made me think about it. Squatting like... Was it like seven hundred pounds raw or something like that for like. Well, Max has done in a meet now at two fifteen body weight. He did a with a belt and knee wraps. Did a seven hundred squat, <laughs> Olympic style big time squatter, and he's pretty famous for <clears throat> injuring his wrist. He has a, a like a dead bone in his wrist, so he can't do Olympic lifts anymore. So he said he made the for a couple of years. He said I'm just going to do squats all the time. So he would squat three times a day every day, like seven days a week, up to max every time. And then one day a week, he just crushed himself with like a five by five session with like 600 pounds, <laughs> raw squats. And he just got to where he could just squat like a monster. I mean, a guy routinely works to 600 pounds and probably can always squat <coughs> 660 or more, 300 kilos or better every time. And it's just the, 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 the real key to strength is just really working. I mean, like Glenn Penlay in every one of his training sessions refers to it as practice. Good practice session today, bad practice session today. Yet, just like anything else, you have to practice being strong there's no magical combination of sets and reps and stuff and 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 exercise that are going to equal strength for you you have to practice do all you can to recover practice with heavy weights as much as you can that's what big strong people have always done and it's what you're going to have to do if you want to know more check out fitter.tv simple strength (laughs) seminar fitter.tv yeah, but simple really, strength by Chris Moore. The best, the best tips you can get are the simplest ideas laid out in a way that, that makes you have your aha moment. Where you don't get caught up in all these schemes. You don't read 800 versions of soup the super training book and try to memorize every periodization model because that's just all convoluted, unnecessary detail. You don't need to cons- the strongest people in the world or the strongest version of you is going to be the version where you keep things simple and just keep the focus on where it needs to be. Heavy barbells paying attention to what you're doing and doing it the best you can. That's, that's why I liked it because you, you actually, I guess you kind of conveyed the way I felt about it already, but I, you, you described it very well in the, um, in the seminar, I thought. A yeah. couple of really cool metaphors that, I'm, like I said, I'll probably steal from you. I think the plates, the spin in the plates one. Yeah, yeah. I like that. But I mean, once, once you get beyond the, the complication and, and feeling like you have to memorize all these things and you go back to a place where you realize it's actually pretty simple... And when you, can re, when you reintroduce some complexity, you do it in a way that makes sense to you, and now you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it, then you really have an aha moment. That's when you get really a lot of satisfaction on your training. That's where all the romance and satisfaction of, of weightlifting comes back. You're not so c- concerned with the things that don't matter. When you're really obsessed with the things that matter, and you go in and you have this religious experience where you, you, you wrestle the barbell, you made progress, you have that satisfaction of it, that's when it really becomes rewarding. And that's what I want more people to experience. Take your... Focus off the things that don't matter and they're sort of 
pulling away at your passion and refocus just on the, the awesome parts of training. But to be fair, Glenn Penley's camp just destroys themselves every single day and they hate it. Well, yeah, well, so. that, that's a cool thing. There's, there's two ways to train. One is for your personal satisfaction and improvement and refinement. And two is to, to be competitive to and medals. better. And those are much different things. Yeah. One is for health and fulfillment and improvement. Yourself. And one is not a healthy activity, is not a fun activity. It's, we're trying to compete and win medals. And you got to do everything you can to do it. And that, that means destroying and rebuilding yourself physically on a daily basis, foregoing any social life, spending all your free time in cold therapy pools. And watching or, or every Abajay of video you can possibly yeah, get your hands yeah, on. Yeah, and then not devoting any time to your career or anything like that. So we're, we're talking two different things that could be a whole other episode of the podcast, for uh, sure. Could you go in real quick? I, I think I just want to get clarified uh, because there was a little bit of confusion the other day. And I'm going way back to what we were talking about earlier with belts and straps and all that kind of stuff. Um, I put my belt on the other day, and uh, I was... And the guy next to me was wearing a belt for squats, too. Yeah. And it was I, a belt party. And I, I put it on, and I had it around me, not as tight. He was cinching it down. Yeah. And he basically making himself thinner, almost. And yeah. I was like, I was like <laughs> and, I, and I put it on. He goes, why are you wearing your belt so loose? It's not going to work. I go, yeah. no, this is how you wear a belt. He goes, what? And they like, he like questioned me, and I was like, Pretty sure I know how more about wearing a belt and squatting than you yeah, do. Yeah, the secret to the secret to wearing a <laughs> I'm belt. I'm squatting 100 more pounds than you, so the secret to wearing a belt is that you put it on just tight enough for it to fit firmly around your belly and maybe compress it, maybe like a half inch or so. And then breathe. And then what you do is you push your abs out against it, and that's what gives you the stability in your your midsection. If you pull the belt in tight, you sort of undermine your your abdominal muscles ability to provide any extra support you you decrease the abdominal pressure and you basically are compromising yourself and you, you're probably gonna fucking hurt your skin and maybe damage your liver or something but yeah the whole secret to being stable is have something to push against right that's what makes you stronger so you push your abs out and it's also probably is 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 what makes a belt a, a efficacious thing to wear during heavy sets i mean it's you're not really gonna pinch and change your position you're gonna push out against it you're gonna be a little more stable you're gonna lift an extra 30 40 pounds and that is going to accumulate and make you stronger. Yeah, so don't over... It's same with knee wraps and anything. Don't over-tighten. Don't go in excess. You're not really looking for that. Yeah. The, 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 basically, what the belt is doing is it's adding stability. So you have stability in your core via your musculature. And usually, you should be taking a deep breath and pushing against your abs and making a big yeah. belly. Belt or no belt. You want your midsection to be as stable as possible. And by adding a belt, you're basically making your your core a little bit thicker you yeah. want to try think about making it part of you now if you if you cinch it down real tight then you're just squeezing yourself but if you make it like m making your core bigger and pushing against it like chris was saying push your abs against it mm -hmm. you're going to feel the a difference yeah more force difference. is going to make it from your your legs to the bar you're going to do a more efficient job at doing that you're gonna lift more weight yeah it shouldn't change your position at all and that's gonna add up over time and you're gonna be stronger yeah so do it embrace the belt for for lifts over 90 percent, that's great if when you're warming up and you're at 70 percent, it doesn't matter don't it, do it, 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 it might actually be weakening your core yeah, so. and it becomes a crutch you're gonna you're gonna always go and grab it yeah which i still do for like i'll wear it uncinched i'll just put it around me for like heavy sets of bench and stuff because i like the feel of it but cinching it down for everything like if you're doing curls and you're wearing a belt you need to really <laughs> Ask yourself if you're training with the most efficiency you could do. <laughs> People do that all the time. Like, what, do you, what are you doing? <laughs> but I like my shirts tight, though. Or the, my definitely, big, my I definitely biggest, look much cooler with the big belt. Like, I know, feel like I'm a superhero. We didn't talk you know, about I, since that. I yeah. pull it in. Like, yeah, my shirts. Do you like, have one with your initials on the front? I should. No. We okay. didn't talk about straps, but straps are, are similar. Why would you use straps? Use straps because they save your grip on key exercise. Like, if you're doing barbell rows with 300 pounds, if you don't have straps on, you're going to spend a lot of effort trying to desperately hold on to the bar. Yeah. The purpose of the exercise. You're not going to be thinking about how you're, you're training your lower back and, and lats. Yeah. You got to think about how, so what you, the purpose of the exercise is. Is yeah. the purpose grip strength or is it to get, make your back stronger? Or what's your overall goal in training? Or if, you're, is, yeah. or if you're doing a lot of snatches, if you don't wear straps, you're going to eat your thumbs up with a hook grip. So why do most competitive weightlifters always snatch with straps? It's because 
You're doing such a high volume of snatches Mm -hmm. that if you don't wear that, you're going to have thumbs that are bloody and you're not going to be able to even hold a bar. Yeah, when I'm weightlifting five days a week, if I'm doing a weightlifting cycle, you have to use straps. Yeah, I'm wearing straps straps on snatches. But that being said, said, if you're a bodybuilder who is doing deadlifts, you shouldn't be listening to this anyway. With like 100 pounds (laughs) or 200 pounds, and you're using straps and you have one tied 800 times around one side, and you have an alternating grip, and you also use a strap on that 800 times, and and you do that, which inherently, if you know anything about uh, why you use the over under grip, you know it, why are you even using why straps use for that? <laughs> <laughs> or if you're using straps for lat pull downs with 100 pounds, you need to really think about why why are you using straps? Because if you're not thinking about why you're using straps, you're probably not thinking about why you're doing anything in your training. There's think a- about why you're using stuff and why you need it. That's a key. Th- People don't think about why they're doing what they're doing in a gym. That's the most that's the most fundamental lesson you can learn. I'm doing this. Why? Well, I can't think of a good reason. You should maybe stop doing that thing. <laughs> There's an awesome video floating around somewhere on the internet, like a commercial of this guy. He's like a bodybuilder working for a supplement company. He's just got straps on, and he's doing like making coffee with his straps. He's wrapping, <laughs> the, he's wrapping the straps around the coffee mug. He goes into work. He's wrapping around the door before yeah. he pulls on it and everything. It's If you it's, say, it's well, I wear fun. them because I wear them, not a good reason. If you're saying, well, I'm doing a set of 10 in a deadlift with 500 pounds, Good reason, because you can't. Your hands are gonna hurt Good holding idea, on to the bad bar. Idea. Yeah, good ideas and bad ideas, folks. That's what you need to separate. Don't do the bad ideas. But if you're in my gym, you don't have to think at all. Just do what I say. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Not as he does. Yeah, don't, Elite Pro. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> that, that cover. What, what was the last point? I think, the logic I think, of strength. Well, I think, yeah, we're, I think we're, we're gonna cover that another uh, time. I think we're out of time, guys. Yep. <laughs> Can I uh, plug RotarySC.com? Oh yeah, we should done that at the beginning. Oh. Home of CrossFit Eastern Shore. Hi, guys. <laughs> and Make plug, sure you pimp this when it gets on the internet. Yep. Plug the uh, strength seminar. I, pr- very, I promise very, very, you'll probably get a kick out of it if you just do it. It's, you know, make the it investment. Is cool. I, I wouldn't even say for, um, not just for people that are looking to get strong, but like trainers, like me as, I mean, you didn't really go over anything that, I don't want to sound like but that I, you know, that I wasn't already aware of, but the way you described it and the way you, or way, the way you conveyed it to everybody was, very, very elegant, and I mean, I think it would actually help me in training other people. Yeah, actually, when I when I sat through it, the whole time I had, he was reminding me of things and making me think about things in ways that I yeah. hadn't thought about them before, and I was like, oh wait, I'm gonna apply that method to programming for this or that, and it really got my wheels turning. So even if even if you're you're not, you'll learn new stuff, but in the very least. You'll you'll think more intelligently about programming, yeah, and you, it really needs to remain a simple thing. It shouldn't be a complicated thing. We're not we're not looking for the the, the Higgs boson particle here. We're fucking training. <laughs> we're we're making people better. We're conveying simple thoughts. Exactly. You don't have to complicate things. We need yeah. to keep the romance in it and the the joy in it. Training beginners, I think that's way more important than I mean all this ridiculous periodization or whatever. I mean, I, I think it's yeah. the ability to get somebody to understand what you're trying to tell them. Yeah. So, I mean, the easier you can convey that to somebody, I think, makes you a better trainer. Yes, absolutely. Remember, that's, if you, that's what coaching is. Remember um, the few quotes that, you know, you're the easiest person to fool. So it's keep, keep your thoughts basic. Don't get too fancy with uh, what you're trying to do. And if you can't explain something, the famous Einstein quote, I guess, if you can't explain something simply in a way that everybody can understand what you're talking about, you don't understand it. If you're using big yeah. words when big words aren't necessary at all, which is what mostly every gym is, then Today you don't we'll be under- working with the anti disestablishmentarianism of. Yeah, if you're in a CrossFit box and you're trying to explain to some mother of four why she needs to do a concurrent periodization plan, you don't know what you're talking about. Pick up the mid. You may not believe me, but you don't know what you're talking about. Bro. The, the, the best, the best <laughs> coaches just know how to communicate and they don't try to impress their members with, with uh, fancy biochemistry. That's that's one oh. reason why I just I can't speak highly enough about Glenn and his guys because they are doing simple, awesome things. You never hear him use a big stupid word. Yeah. So yeah. F- seek out people who don't use big, stupid words. Yeah. <laughs> You're forward. Same way with uh, same way with uh, Jim Windler. I think. Yeah, I mean Jim's a great guy because he he removes the complexity where no complexity is required. So take that lesson, folks. Take it to heart. Take it to heart. And that's where we're going to leave you on this episode of Bob Bill Strip. Don't forget to check out Technique One. Take it to heart, and we're going to take it away. We'll see you guys <laughs> in two and two. Hey, all right. <laughs> well, that was fun, eh?
good. Eight. Oh man. Seven hours of driving. I watched Trent.